Okay, picture this. You've been like loving the content of your favorite digital brujo for like a year. You repost, you share it with friends. You're just like vibing on the content. You think this person is so cool. And then you get the opportunity to sit down and talk to them. And you do. And they are amazing. Not only are they cool, but they're fucking funny. And they're really smart. So what do you do? What do you do? Do you turn off your recording equipment after an hour because that's what normal society would tell you to do when it comes to podcasting? No. No, my friend. You stay and you dig deeper. And that is why today is our first two-part episode on the 12th House Podcast. Hi, I'm Michelle Pelisson. I'm the head witch in charge here at Holisticism in the 12th House. And today we have our first two-part episode with a very special guest, Michael Cardenas. Michael is the founder of Old Ways. And you probably know Old Ways on Instagram. If you don't already know Old Ways on Instagram, what are you doing? Get yourself on there. Follow Old Ways with an old with an E. Michael is a brujo and a practicing practitioner. And oh my gosh, he is incredible. He's so fucking cool. And I was so excited to chat with him virtually before we recorded this podcast episode we actually did a intro call because we've never met in person and i swear we should have recorded our intro call a few weeks before we actually had our full-on podcast conversation and i just knew that he was going to be amazing and i could not wait to like chat with him more so i know you're going to love this episode and as we were going through it it felt like everything was important you know Everything from Michael's story to his experiences to to the way that he practices to how he learned, it all felt like so necessary and potent. So we decided we're not going to steal from our audience. We're going to give them all the juicy goods and let's cut this episode into two shorter episodes. It's not just like a two hour love fest. So let us know what you think. I hope that you like that. I hope it feels a little bit more doable that way. In this first half, we talk about technomancy, which is a word that I learned from Michael and I think is brilliant and really encapsulates a lot of what we're doing in the digital realm right now. Uh, We talk about manifestation and letting things go and dating and that sort of like difficult situation of not obsessing over something that you want and like how hard it is to to, to be that while you're also manifesting or, or spell casting. We talk about general magical and spell casting hygiene and what's really important and what people are certainly not doing when they're casting their spells. And we also talked about the black mirror that is our iPhones. When Michael used the term black mirror to describe the iPhone, I was thinking about how witches use black mirrors or mirrors or black glass in general to see the future and to also like pick up messages and imagery. And I really hadn't thought of it in this way. And oh God, he's so smart. So we talk about that. We talk about how to use crystals and incense and spells to protect yourself in the digital realm. And we also talk a lot about sort of the energy that happens in digital spaces and how to protect yourself from it and to use it wisely. You know, just because energy can get in a direction of dangerous doesn't mean that it has to be. And it also doesn't mean that like the internet's bad or the digital realm is bad. It just means we have to be really thoughtful with our spaciousness and how we're entering these new realms. So I'm excited for you to listen to this episode. I can't wait to hear what you think. And you can pop over to the next episode when you're done to learn a little bit more about Michael. Okay. With that, let's get into it. Hi, Michael. Hi there. How's it going? <laughs> I'm so happy to be talking to you. We actually have already been talking. We forgot to hit record. We just yeah. like went into it. Yeah. But I've truly been fangirling so hard, like simping over your content for like the past year. And it is 
so delightful to like have you on the 12th house podcast. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for saying that sometimes <laughs> we were just talking about this, about how like sometimes you have a little bit, I guess it's like imposter syndrome or, totally. you know, like, yeah. feel, like feeling like you're screaming into the void and like <laughs> people are totally not going to care about this, but I'm doing this for me. And then, and then you get like positive feedback. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'll focus more on like whatever it is that you were connecting with. And so I appreciate that. Yeah. I feel like when you first get started and you're like just kind of throwing things at the wall and like hoping that they stick, you just get so used to failure. I call it failure tolerance. Like your failure <laughs> tolerance go, gets so high because you're like, oh, I'm used to nobody liking this shit. <laughs> like no one commenting and no one buying anything from me, but I still show up and put it out in the world so that when it it's almost like at least for me, it feels like often it flips overnight. It's mm -hmm. like you reach this tipping point and then all of a sudden it's like you're on the other side of that <laughs> failure threshold yeah. and things start working and you're like, wait, this is working. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Happened? I didn't change. Like what happened? Or maybe I did change. Mm -hmm. When was that moment for you? Well, it's a buildup. It's some, it's, you know, you start off feeling like you're screaming into the void and like people <laughs> people don't like what you're doing or like whatever it is but really you know it just takes consistency it may mm -hmm. seem like things have happened overnight because you're like oh wow I just heard about this person in this page and you know and they, they have like a certain amount of numbers or like whatever and I'm like yeah, but I've been doing this for 15 years. And then like pr prior, prior to you finding the page, I was literally screaming into the void to like five people for a good three years. And then, you know, and then slowly, not just the community, but like society started to open up about these ideas about mysticism and witchcraft and and looking beyond you know that that mask of scariness and they started to listen and they started to i started to get less dms about do you worship the devil is this evil to how do i do it or can you do it for me I people feel are like how feel. do you worship the devil like what yeah. shoe should i wear <laughs> yeah exactly exactly the conversation started to change and like you say i didn't change i you know mm -hmm. we keep doing the same thing but people start to open up so if you look at it in terms of like how many years you've been at it or how many months you've been at it things change rapidly especially with social media so it shifted i think when i decided that i could quit my day job <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I'm a Taurus, I, you know, I, I'm really big about my, my stability and stuff like that. So for me, it changed then. Like that's when mm. I felt like it, I, that I was really doing something. That's when it became like, I started to take it more seriously and I started to invest in it. It really has never been about numbers or like anything like that. It, that all came afterwards. But once I was able to like have this be my, my career that I chose that I get to decide what I'm doing. I get to be the boss like 100%. That's when I was like, okay, now, now this is something like, wow. I remember being so scared to quit my day job. And also it was like the, I was at the end of my rope. Like I literally did not have enough hours in the day to do everything that I wanted to do. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. Like I can't keep going on like this anymore. Like something's I'm going to snap. Like This isn't feasible for like a human being. And I'm like a definitely a hyper cautious person when it comes to stability and like financial mm -hmm. stability. Even now, like our business is thriving and I still have those almost like remnants or PTSD moments of when I was so, so, so broke as an artist. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, had, had took out like $60 to like spend on groceries for the month and like remember putting it in envelope, like putting my cash in envelopes to like help myself budget. Now that you're so successful, do you still have those moments? 100%. And I don't, you know, I don't want people to think that that social media is real life. <laughs> right. You know well, what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, we've <laughs> talked about how like social media is just like an alternate, literally an alternate universe, like yeah, a complete 100%. other timeline. It, yeah. It, yeah. What I mean by that is that, of course, I've created this perfect little spiritual world that I think is visually great. And mm -hmm. I work really hard. It's great. I would on, agree with that. On, thank you. <laughs> on the visual aspect of it, because I like to think of it as like a visual spell. 
that I'm casting each day and like whatever the energy that is needed, there's an image, blah, blah, blah. That's not how my life is all the time. Life can be like really chaotic. Like I said, like I was trying to scramble here because I'm trying to get the puppy in order, like whatever. I'm trying to like make sure I don't have anything, like any people's spells in the background that you could see that needs to be private. Right. So I'm like, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's that aspect. Also, people's Instagram numbers does not equate their bank account. You know, Mm -mm. you know, unless, unless, you know, and and some people it does, but I'm not sitting here not worrying about my stability because like you said, it's almost like instilled in us from like when we're trying to climb up and when $60 was like make or break you, you know, for the grocery (laughs) store. Now, when I like go Mm -hmm. to the grocery store and I see my total, I'm still like, I'm insane. I really just thought like... (laughs) organic whatever whatever to go on top of my you know i have a supplement closet so anyway Mm -hmm. we we start to become (laughs) i'm conscious about spending the money and i think that Mm -hmm. you know that person that was trying to make it or whatever always keeps us in balance and and, in check i do have those moments to where like i i think we talked about earlier about almost having like this imposter syndrome Mm -hmm. of feeling like you know what if it all ends tomorrow. It, there's like a traumatic thing about it. Like, what if no one cares tomorrow? What if everyone just like right. moves on and stems from like fear of abandonment? And you know, it, it goes on and on and on. But no, I'm not, I'm, I'm absolutely, I have to bring myself back every day, starting mm-hmm. in the morning. Well, I'm a really late riser. Sometimes it's the afternoon because I work at <laughs> starting night. In, starting in the afternoon. <laughs> starting in the afternoon. Well, mind you, because I'm working till like 4 a.m. sometimes because right. some things that I do have to be done at like a certain time. And I'm just the night owl, to be to yeah. be honest. So, yeah, I, I have to bring myself back. I have to remind myself what I did to get here. It's a daily thing. It really, really mm-hmm. is. I know that. The idea of being your own boss and like having your own business is very big right now. And I think that once people start to do it, they start, they they're like, "What? This is like this absolute like, like, you're free you guys, falling." This is like really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly free falling. I'm like, "You are enjoy it." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, it, it just does it. So you do have to like bring yourself back and I guess ground yourself and remind yourself like what you're really doing. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and like being an, being an entre- entrepreneur to me is such a segue or I guess like offshoot of just being like an intuitive person and someone who follows their intuition. Cause like you are in free fall all the time where you're like, mm-hmm. I fuck, I like had a plan, but my intuition is telling me to do otherwise. Or like, mm-hmm. we all know that my plan's a joke. Like there, I'm not the only one in control in this situation. So I, I kind of feel like magical people are like actually quite perfectly inclined to be entrepreneurs because we're sort of, used to that push and pull of like, I have some energy I can direct. I cannot direct every single thing in the world in my favor and exactly the way that I want it to be. But I do have a little, I have some sovereignty in, in this situation. And part of it is also like just letting go and mm-hmm. you know, unclenching your butthole about it. Being uh-huh. like, All right, what's supposed to happen is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, have a, I have a friend who's also a water sign and, she said to me the other day, she was like, oh, it's so funny. Like, my Scorpio friends are over here telling me, like, you know, like, you know, talk your shit. You better go back and, like, check that person. She's like, and then I go into your page and all my Earth sign friends are like, let go. It's going to be fun. <laughs> you, you have to ground. And I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to myself. I'm like, all right. That's what I tell people, too. Like, if, it, if like, if I come up with, like, a quote for the day or, like, whatever, I'm talking to myself. I'm trying to remind mm-hmm. myself of some shit, you know. I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. the, the aspect that we need to let go of is control. We need to accept the fact that in reality, there's nothing but chaos. And sometimes those things can be kind of like predicted. They could be felt out. You can navigate them. And then other times it's complete static noise situation. And you have yeah. to accept all of it <laughs> or work through all of it. Or go to bed it's, like I do. <laughs> right. Or be like, okay, I'm going to put my computer away, put the phone down, go play with the dog or have sex or do something yeah. that is not this. Because, like, I can't be in this moment anymore, like, in this endless loop. 
Yeah, that's the multiple realities that you were like bringing up. Last night, I was obsessing over a layout and obsessing over like content and trying to plan it and all this stuff. And I was in bed, I was supposed to be going to sleep. And then I had a moment to where I had a visual of myself inside of this box, like kind of like inside of my phone. And my guide's kind of saying, like, there's a world outside of this box. Like, you have to disconnect from this box. (laughs) And so Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. But the way that I saw it was, like, pull yourself out of that reality. Come back to this reality. You have to Mm -hmm. recharge. Like, you're not going to find the answers tonight. You have to go to bed (laughs) sort of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. And and it does feel like that the internet world is like stickier in a way than this real world. Sometimes it's, it's, it's more of, it feels like a maze, like there's more to get caught in. And I would like love for us to go deeper on this idea of like truly another world or like another universe and the digital space being that, because I think we often talk about like, Oh yeah, of course, like Instagram isn't real life. It's like, you know, it's a hologram, but, I'm kind of of the mind that like it actually is another universe Mm -hmm. and, and just like the astral plane, right? Like when we're sleeping, like things can happen there that we can either like bring with us into this real life or whatever, quote unquote, real life, right? Physical reality. Yes. Thank you. Uh You're so much more articulate than I am, but same thing with that digital world. And I, and we're not like always using our energy in the most mindful conscious way and we're like throwing shit around and I feel like it's going to come back and get us if we're not in awareness of it just like just like in this physical reality space I would love to hear your thoughts because I know you're also you practice technomancy which Mm -hmm. is a new word I learned from you and I'm obsessed with so like tell me unload your brain on me I want to hear everything so for so technomancy actually came from Lisa Stardust. She Oh she, yeah. She created the term. We talked about it. I talked to her first about it and I was calling it Cyber Blue Haria. And Oh, that's good too though. And she was like, Yeah, like technomancy. I was like, You're a genius. And because she's a writer, <laughs> she's like in that space all the time, like Gemini Queen, shout out to Lisa. So the way I see it is like it's like looking back at at multiple world trees that have been kind of set up before us, the shamanic tree, the, the Kabbalistic tree of life, the Potomitan in, in Haitian voodoo that connects both worlds, the Sang in traditional witchcraft. This is a map of the cosmos, of the three mm-hmm. different levels of reality. There's multiple, but they talk about, mm-hmm. you know, there's a cosmic realm, there's the astral realm, there's the physical realm or four even, and then there's the ancestral underworld realm, and it expands and expands. I think what we kind of have to do is update that. We have to Mm -hmm. update this multiple world map, kind of update the cosmology to digital realm, you know, Mm -hmm. because we are constantly in it. We're constantly working in it. I think a lot of our ancestors spent a lot of time in the cosmic realms, and that's why we have all of this information about the cosmos. They, they, that's mm-hmm. where they were sending themselves off to. Right. Then we have cultures that are deeply rooted in ancestral veneration. And they were projecting themselves into underworld realms and trying mm-hmm. to understand that where our society is now, I feel, is in the digital realm. And so, we're on, we're, our asses are on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on TikTok. There are people, like, there's still some of us that, like, read and go outside and try to understand things that are happening and try to, whatever, whatever. But most of us are just, like, in the digital realm, right? So we we had to come up with ways to defend ourselves, to protect mm-hmm. ourselves, to understand this because it's still very new. Yeah. You know, we haven't had a century that to to marinate on it is everything is so new so i think we're we're gonna learn it you know people are starting to you know have these epiphanies to where they're like i need a social media break this is really draining me you know what they're doing is they're pulling themselves out of that vortex where you know the technomancy kind of comes 
into play is understanding that the way that we get into that realm, we have a tool. It's our black mirror. It's our phone. <laughs> That's how we get into the realm. <laughs> you yeah. know, for the cosmic realm, sometimes it was plant medicine. Most of the time, other times it's like working through, you know, certain type of rituals. If, and, you know, in the tradition that I learned, the purpose of ritual is to get you into a certain realm. Either we're, you know, we're going into yeah. the realm of opening the roads, we're going into the realm of wherever, the realm of the spirits. So our phone is the way to get there. But if you think about it, we often go into it with no shields, <laughs> you know, yeah. not understanding the territory. Now we're starting to understand the territory. I think that's where we're at. Michael, you're so smart. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes. this, this is like, this is, so this is not new too. Like I didn't come up with this. These are things that were like left for us. This is, you know, I've, I've studied some different forms of shamanism. I don't practice different forms of shamanism. I studied them. I studied multiple different types of mysticism and this is all there. This is all yeah. laid out for us. And I want people to hear me when I say that this is not new. We did, you know, this is not a new idea. That's why my company or my business is called Old Ways because none of it's new. We're mm-hmm. bringing it into the new space and we're creating our new realities with it, but it's not new. That's the whole, yeah. the whole purpose of it. Does that make sense? <laughs> it totally makes sense. Okay. And I'm so curious because we've kind of talked already about you and I about sort of like basically the toxic culture that can exist on these internet platforms, whether it's Twitter, or Instagram, or even Reddit, and mm-hmm. how sort of the masses, like the mass, I won't even say the masses, the mass of energy can sort of sort of like unleash like a wildfire. And all of a sudden it's out of control and it's ravaging and destroying with reckless abandon. Mm-hmm. And often without like the idea of justice at heart with just like, rage (laughs) and fire. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed in so many people, because I have tons of students and so many friends who I talk to over the internet, right? Like who were mainly staying in touch over things like Instagram or Twitter or or DM, who are really scared to show themselves Mm -hmm. in the digital world because they're afraid of being seen, because they're afraid if they're seen, then they might be I don't know, at the whim of the ma- this sort of like anonymous mass. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so curious because you are a public figure. And I think that you are so empathetic and kind and intuitive with everything that you create. But I'm sure you've been on the receiving end of some gnarly energy. Like, what mm-hmm. do you do to protect? Like, what's your ritual to protect yourself if you feel com- comfortable to share it? My God, there's so many things that have <laughs> popped up in <laughs> Just from from that. Run with it. Just run with it. That's a really, really good question. It's pretty loaded, too. Well, first of all, what you're referring to is, like, it's council culture and the mob mentality that comes with it. And it's really turned into this game of if you have beef with someone or you just don't like someone or if someone was – if you didn't like the way the person, like, interacted with you you could go around and you could pretty much inform everyone that follows you online and you know what you're doing and you know that you can incite this type of like mob mentality i know that that's not what everyone is doing but that's what i'm focusing on you know there are very positive Mm -hmm. aspects of there's a difference between council culture and accountability right Exactly. They're, they're, they're not, yeah. not, they're not synonymous. And restorative justice and restorative yeah. justice requires yeah. accountability, right? And exactly. calling in of people who have done harm and saying like, and yeah. them acknowledging that they've done harm. And yeah, I don't think, yeah. I think we need more of that. Like if we're, yeah. if we're calling to like, you know, abolish police departments and to, if we're, if we're calling for abolition, then we need yeah. to have accountability culture. And yeah. that's the most radical thing that we can do. Yeah. That's way more radical than cancel culture. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because here, here's the deal. Racism, <laughs> is, racism is not an accident. You know, this is something that's in your vocabulary. You sit around and you think this way to the point where if something happens and triggers you, this is your intuitive, instinctual response. That's not an accident. Abuse mm-hmm. is not an accident. 
Mm-hmm. Right. The language that you use is not accident. It's already in you. I'm sure that once you're called out for it, you can kind of like <laughs> sit back and go, wow, I didn't know that I was like a complete monster for thinking these things or saying these things on a regular basis, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. You still have to be held accountable for that. Mm-hmm. That's accountability, right? Mm-hmm. The council culture is really about the danger of it is it's the boy who cried wolf. Eventually, Mm -hmm. people are going to stop taking it seriously. We start to disempower that whole movement, and then people stop caring. Then people stop paying attention. Things start to fall on deaf ears. That's why Mm -hmm. it's important to understand the power that we will, right? Right. It's 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 because it's a powerful thing because you know it doesn't you don't have to be an influencer to have an impact, right? You know things catch like a wildfire. The way that I've experienced it is either through someone taking, it's never been like a language thing. It's never been like the way that I'm treating people because I don't, I will never give you that. It's not in my vocabulary. It's not in my, in the way that I live. It's not in my lifestyle. It could be a photo or it could be a quote and Mm -hmm. someone will say, you know, that's mine. I wrote about this, you know, mm-hmm. a year ago. And on my end, I'm like going or going around fishing. I'm like, do you know how I've like <laughs> sat around for like hours and hours trying to come up with something that goes with something? So it starts off with like we get a hit, right? And you start to flow. And I'm like, talk about realizing your worth, right? Then I'm like, mm-hmm. what is something? that is impactful that could encompass this because it's it's a time stamp the internet is like eternal it's a time stamp and and i don't want to be like archiving things every day of like this is trash this is trash be super (laughs) intentional i want to be super intentional so no i'm not going around fishing for things or looking at other pages for inspiration i've gotten a lot of backlash for not following other witches what? Or, really? or, yeah, because they think I'm, I'm being an elitist or something like that. And sometimes I don't allow them to follow me because here's what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whether conscious or unconscious, we're going to start to get influenced by each other. Then what yeah. happens? And, and mind you, there's like this universal, there are universal thought forms that I believe in that we can get on the same wavelength or whatever. I don't even right. want We can that. both get a similar idea that lands on our shoulder that whispers in our ear around the same time. Yeah. Around the same time. It does happen. But, you know, beyond that, I just don't want, I don't want to be consciously or subconsciously influenced by anything that you're doing. I've noticed a lot that people will just straight up start taking my style, my structure, my business model. And I, oh. and I'm not here for it because this is a whole other conversation, but when I first started out, there were like three of us or two of us mm-hmm. and there weren't any group services. Mm-hmm. People were like, how are you? They're like one-on-one is a lot. Like, how are you going to do this? I have a background in energetic healing and I used to do group healings with people. I know how to manage 30 people, 40 people, 50 people at a time. That's totally different approach, right? Yeah. As time went by, if you look up group services or like group spell work or like whatever, it's a whole culture. Oh, I feel like I've seen it proliferate over yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah. And yeah. it's good because we need mass healing. We need mass manifestation. We I just did that. one of your, I did one of your service, your services last new moon. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's coming out tonight. The attraction service mm-hmm. report. And I'm like, okay, this is inevitable. You know, we've been told by elders for eons that this is going to happen. We need massive collective healing. Cool. Just do it your own style. I see things word for word sometimes. And I'm no like, way. okay, yeah. I'm like, I should just. What keep- do you do? Do you like, yeah, what do you do? Nothing. Because. You don't do anything. No, because it turns into a war. It turns into yeah. an ego battle. It turns into me getting really, really pissed off. And, (laughs) and I know that about myself, you know, I have like, I have, I have a Scorpio moon. I'm very, me too. I could be very, I can go into war very easily. The problem with that is that I'll be upset for like three days. It doesn't Mm -hmm. end, it doesn't end there. 
It mm-hmm. becomes obsessive. It becomes a thing. And I'm like, I have no time for this. I have to help people. I don't have time right. to be fighting with you on the internet. Yes. And so that's just something that came with time. And I'm like, whatever, block, blah, blah, blah. So I have, I also have a Scorpio moon. And I feel like there are a lot of people out there who are going to be listening who are like, and, and I hear from a lot of people like, what do I do when someone copies my stuff? Or like when someone's knocking off my stuff. And it's really hard to like not take it personally and to, to like roll over and be, or to like sort of turn the other cheek and be like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But I feel like you kind of have to. And sometimes I do think you have to block the person or just like cut yeah. them out, like cut off their supply of like, yeah. no, well, not, I've, we're not doing that anymore. I've fought the battle so many times. That, uh, that hasn't always been the case. I used to confront the person. I used to cuss them out. We used no. to, oh, straight up, like, professionally, Michael. whatever, all this stuff <laughs> goes out the window. No, I know myself. Like, I'm very real. Like, I have to work on myself daily because I could be very re- reactive because I've been yeah. working on myself. It doesn't happen anymore as often. Right. But, no, I used to go right into it. And I'm like, we. I was like, if anybody wants to see where this came from, come to my page and check it out because I have all the time, uh, time staff receipts. I was like, this person also follows me. They look at all of my stories. They've left comments on everything. They're straight up stealing from me. That thing becomes a war for, like, two weeks. Mm-hmm. It was, and it's not just a person in a day. I would see like eight people in a day. I would also mm-hmm. have, it doesn't happen very much anymore, but there were people that would ambiguously call themselves a psychic and they would just use my photos and they'll be like, contact me for spell work. And now they're straight up just stealing identities. But back in the day, yeah. it was, you know, and we'll get to that, but back in the day, it was just, you know, contact me, whatever, whatever. I would get angry emails. I would get threats and they would say, you did this spell for me. I paid you $5,000 and I'd never heard anything back from you. And I'm like, what? at that time I was like, I charge like a hundred dollars. <laughs> like, first off the audacity of fake me. Who did me you give, right? give $5,000 <laughs> to without confirming their identity? Right, you, you know, don't just like send them a Venmo, dude. <laughs> five grand, that's what you did. Like, okay, okay, I get it. So it started with that. So trust me, I've I've gone down the path, and I'm I'm not there anymore. I don't see it as like even turning the other cheek. I'm like, I'm not gonna get like at the end of it's the day, people it. are going to see who you are. Once I cut you off from this supply of energy and inspiration and all the work that I'm doing. You're going to be left to your own devices. You're going to have to either go copy somebody else or you're going to implode. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy to see it. So I let people, I've said something a long time ago about don't worry about your, you know, don't worry about your haters. Eventually they'll self-destruct. And that's like mm-hmm. a mantra for me. <laughs> that's a good mantra. It's true. Like that energy is combustible. Or aff- affirmation. Anyways. <laughs> it is. It's. You you really can't get caught up in that because it is a it's obsessive and that's like kind of feel like that energy of that digital realm that we're talking about it is sort of like this obsessive like high potent and potency energy that maybe like in a way it's a little Jupiterian because like everything it touches is like so big even when it like doesn't we don't want it to be big it like gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it's really hard to stop it from growing. Yeah, it sounds cheesy, but energy goes where attention flows. And I don't want to put my energy into it. Because people were like, you should call them out. You should keep it going. And I'm like, no, I'm, like, I'm exhausted. I have <laughs> little big, like, six salt baths to get this shit off of me. Like, I'm right. I'm done with it. It's not an, you know, and trust me, by no means, if it's serious, if it's very serious and needs my attention, 100%. And I'm not going to go into yelling and screaming. I got legal now. Like, things have changed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if I have to, I will. And it's and, and only when necessary. I'm not trying to, like, weaponize that or, like, anything mm-hmm. like that. It's just, like, if someone is stealing my identity and yeah. taking people's oh, money. Oh, yeah. That is, like, really – that's when people can start yeah. suing you. And you, you absolutely need to protect yourself. And that's, like that, – I mean, spiritual protection is really important, but also Mm -hmm. like practical Practical. material protection is really important too. like get a copyright guys, like Mm -hmm. go get a trademark if you need to on your ideas, like Mm -hmm. make sure that you're protecting yourself on from every level. That's just 
good sense. Yeah, the Walter Mercado documentary was a very big oh eye my opener. God, how heartbreaking! It's a very big eye opener, but that's what we're talking about. It's about mm-hmm. protecting your ideas, protecting your work, because mm-hmm. look what happened to him. You know, if you need a visual, go watch it and then cry like I did for for a day. But okay, so that like on a real level, that's how I handle things. On a spiritual level, I I like to work with stones a lot. For some reason, like on an intuitive level, I feel like navigating the digital realm requires crystals. (laughs) So it requires. I don't know. Do you think it's because there's crystals inside of like our phones and there's like there's gold inside of our computers and. All the microchips and shit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So there, there's something there. At the beginning, I couldn't really understand it. Uh, so anyhow, I've noticed that the most effective way is to incorporate that. It's become like mass culture now. You can buy little Shungai medallions mm-hmm. to put on the back of your phone. Do it. Do that stuff. Right now, oh, I can't show you, but right now, uh, pop socket i'm not it's not an ad or anything like that but i saw i was very but open surprised. to it I was, open yeah, to it but open to it <laughs> i was very surprised when they started offering crystal pop sockets so i have a, a real lapis lazuli i checked it out because i'm afraid about like fake crystals cool. but, so anyway so now there's crystal energy on the phone and it's for protection also helps with like creativity intuition it's like yeah. perfect, right so there's that aspect incorporating you know something like an oil like a protection oil i'm big about that i anoint myself i anoint my doorways window sills i anoint my phone too and it depends on what i need in that moment sometimes i feel like energy is toxic so i'll use the protection oil sometimes i'm trying to manifest something to come through so i'll use prosperity or road opener oil Sometimes me and John are fighting, so I'll use I'll use peaceful <laughs> relationship or communication oil or whatever. That's sort of like real shit. So that is useful to me. That's helpful to me. But I've heard of people writing psalms, like people that are comfortable with that kind of stuff, like writing psalms on a small piece of paper and putting it between your phone and the case. case. That's smart. I don't know if that would overheat, though. That was, like, my overactive mind thinking. But, or you know, if that would be so, whatever. The little ways you start to incorporate it. I also, any time I'm burning herbs, I wave my phone over it just to clear yeah. the static energy. And lastly, get yourself a bell. Mm. A straight-up bell. So we use bells in, in seances. We use bells in tarot. We use bells uh, when we're working at the Bovida and Espiritismo. It clears static energy. When you're mm-hmm. raising a vibration, when you're raising or creating an energy or calling an energy, you can't create an energy, you are dispersing the vibration. And so sometimes you need to ring the bell over the phone. Sounds nuts, but <laughs> if you that does not see, sound nuts at you'll all. You'll see the difference. You'll feel the difference when you start to manage that energy. Yeah. Okay. That's that's all so good. And I feel like you're practicing technomancy every time you put up something on your Instagram. So mm-hmm. do you do you consider that practice too? Yeah. So I cast spells on the, that's how I'm casting spells in the digital world. Yeah. And you'll notice it. Now that I told you that, when you, when you'll notice it, especially on Twitter, Twitter, it's all verbal spells. Instagram, I'm casting visual spells. Yep. It's something that's needed. Like if I'm, you know, in meditation, I'm like, ma, I really need to work on expansion and all of these things. It's all on my page. It's all mm-hmm. there. I'm casting a spell. So be conscious of what you're putting out there because that to me like my instagram is like a mood board yeah it's it's a vision board yeah i tell people all the time you know there's a reason they call spell it spelling right it's because it's language and so you have to be really careful what you say in the world and Mm -hmm. be really intentional about what you say and same thing when you're like you know i was a copywriter in a previous Mm -hmm. incarnation of my life cool and how do you think you sell things through copywriting? Do you not, do you really not think that that's a spell? Like, come on, that's exactly what that is. Like you're hypnotizing someone in a way with your words and you're like creating a clear directive. The better your copy, the more clear it is, the easier it is to understand. And you have a clear intention, right? We call it a call to action. So like mm. you do a couple things when you're copywriting, you have a head nod moment, which is, yes, this is for me, which is 
I mean, that's what you do in a spell too, right? Like who's the, who's this for? Who's identifying? Who wants to like put this out into the world? That's a head nod moment in copywriting. And then we have like, slaying our sacred cows where you cast out your limiting beliefs where you limit your what you don't believe in anymore and then you create room for that new belief to come through and then you have a very clear call to action so what is the action that's going to come forth and like what do you want the person on the other end to do after this that gave me that's chills. all spell that's all spell work and mm-hmm. people you know sort of shrug off copywriting or or business is like not intuitive not magical it is. How could it not be? <laughs> like, I don't get it. The most successful <laughs> business people bring mystics into their team. Mm-hmm. Let's, you know, just it's all intuitive. Business is all intuitive. And that's why some of them will just like shrug you off. But when I first started out, it was like businessmen. It was yeah. like banker. Like it was, it was like financial advisors and things like that. I've heard many astrologers say, you know, Millionaires don't believe in astrology. Billionaires do. Mm-hmm. Because they want you. Yeah. The wealthier you are, it's because you're like you're using the energy to like get you there to get you to success. Because that's a whole realm in itself. It's all about navigation, right? Mm-hmm. And so the way that you navigate it is through intuition. You tap into someone who has a stronger intuition than you, or has a different perspective or a clearer vision. That's in, mm-hmm. in, that's indispensable. So what was happening in that realm, in those realms, it's about facts and it's about results. Is this true or not? Is this, is it kind of true? Did you kind of tell me what I needed to know or did you tell me? I'm (laughs) uh, very confident saying that I'm very accurate when I read. And so when Mm. I would tell them specific things, specific numbers, specific yes or no, 100% or like whatever, which I don't do anymore because that gets you into trouble, not because you were wrong, but because if they add, so if we take it to a different aspect and we talk about something a little less predictable, like love or things that yeah. flux, fluctuate, it's bad. You, you can't tell people <laughs> that things are 100%. Anyhow, they started <laughs> to see that there was something to it. Yeah. And so then they would use me and they would, and they would or use me. That's so funny. They would hire me. That's, <laughs> that, was, that was the thing because I hated doing it. I felt like I was going out, but I was like, this, there's something to this because I needed to learn from them something. Yeah. What do you think you learned? I learned that I was char- I wasn't charging enough. Uh-huh. I learned that I wasn't valuing what I was doing and I was also still living in this space to where I felt like what I was doing was ridiculous because mm. that's what was being projected onto me. Mm. You know, through my, my parent, you know, my mother, through society in general, people are like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a professional witch. And they're like, okay, well, what do you really do? Like, even when I met, when I met my, my partner, his friends were kind of like, okay, but what's like your day job? And I'm like, no, that's, that's what I do. I invented post-its. It felt like very like, (laughs) that's what I do. (laughs) I invented post-its. It felt like that for a long time. So I, once again, it was like, boxes were kind of like kicking in, but when you have someone that doesn't come from that world and they're not trying to hype you up and they have no reason to, you're like this straight lace conservative dude just told me that I need to take what I'm doing more seriously. And then I wasn't charging enough. And he goes, he goes, I and he's like, and don't expect me to overpay you because this is what you're asking for. He's like, so ask for more straight up. Wow. And I was like, okay. And then Nothing he told like a me, straight white man to tell to really like remind you to yeah. ask for just more. <laughs> this was this was this wasn't stuck to white men, you know. It, you know, I I worked with with all types of people, and the consensus was the same that I wasn't taking what I was doing seriously because I could actually do it in their in their mm-hmm. words, you know, like you can right. actually do this. You're not like <laughs> jerking me around or like whatever, and, right. and so. <laughs> Anyhow, that's that's what I got from that from that whole interaction, and then I never worked with a person like that again. Not that I'm opposed to it, but I just never did ever again. But like that was it. That's what I was supposed to learn. And then I moved on to the next level, and I got to work with people that are cool <laughs> and I like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice reward of like learning the lesson. Is like, oh, I don't have to do. I actually don't have to deal with assholes. That was a really hard lesson for me to learn. It took a long time in in dating life. 
in professional life, like, oh, I actually don't have to. I can just say no <laughs> to these types of people. Yeah. And it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Because the fear of no comes from scarcity mentality that it won't come back or that, you know, what if this is my one shot and I should just stick it up? No. Like if you say no to something, something else that actually is correct for you will, will come your way. I'm a big believer in that. Lucy Lou, Lucy Lou, the actress called it having fuck you money. She's like, it's very important to have fuck you money because if someone offers me a role that I don't want to play, I can say fuck you. I'm not doing that. Mm. <laughs> I got money, you know. I, I, that's mm-hmm. legend. I love that. Fuck you money is a baller move. Mm-hmm. And lately, actually, over the last couple of years, as I've gotten a lot more confident, like I had to learn some lessons of like, oh, I know how to make money, you know, like I always know how to make money. So I don't need to worry about that so much. What I had a hard time with was holding on to money and it would like slip through my fingers. It felt like and now I'm a better container for that. Mm. And lately it's been, mm. oh, you know what? I can do things I don't like because everyone has a price. You know, it's that hustler archetype. Like, well, everyone had, everyone does have a price, you know, maybe that, you know, one of those guys will come back to you and you might like dismiss them out of pocket. Right. But like, if they're like for a million dollars, would you Mm -hmm. do a long session with me? You'd be like, you could be the biggest asshole in the world. And like for a thousand, for a million dollars. Okay, sure. I'll work with you or 5 million or 10 million. Like we all have a price. So now that's something that I do when I'm trying to figure out pricing. I just like close my eyes and I feature cast to like being in the middle of that project or that experience. And like, if it's really, you know, really going down the tubes, if it's like really hard and it's not that fun, what would be worth it to me to say like, well, you know what? I'm getting paid 20 grand to do this. And okay. Like it's hard, but it's worth it or 50 grand or whatever. I have to say I was like very privileged to, they weren't assholes. They were just not people I didn't want to talk to. You know what I mean? Like they were never rude to me because I don't have it in me to, to sit around and take it. It was just like, it wasn't my preference. And then going towards like big jobs and things like that, I would have it to where because I've had to do stuff like that before. And mm-hmm. I would have it to where in my contract, it was like, I'm only here on a set or like whatever for what I'm needed for. And then I'm going mm-hmm. back to my mm-hmm. room or like wherever I'm at, because I know I'm not going to like being around someone, whatever. And there's usually a liaison too. There's someone mm-hmm. that will actually handle the booking. And then when you get there, they will guide you around a lot or like whatever it is. So you don't really have to deal with that person. You know, yeah. I try to, when I'm envisioning these things, I'm like, okay, just put me with someone that will either create a barrier between me and that person so I don't have to deal with them directly mm-hmm. or just have them ignore me. <laughs> have them let me come and do my job and leave me alone. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's a, I think it's important, like, when we're manifesting this sort of thing, if you're detail oriented and you just can't keep it simple, be careful about those things that you're slipping in there of like, don't manifest. Not, not that it won't happen or whatever, but don't put your energy towards this asshole of a person being in your way. You know, right. maybe they, right. maybe you don't deal with them. Maybe you come to do what you're going to do. With you Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. I'm super into this idea right now of like collapsing timelines and quantum leaping and mm. how, like, how can we do that with ease? when it's appropriate, right? It's not always appropriate, but sometimes it is. And it wasn't sticking like this. <laughs> I was really struggling with it until I heard, read this reframe of what if the timeline wanted to collapse and you're the thing standing in the way, Ooh. struggling and asking it to slow down. Ooh. So what would it look like if you just got out of the way? I was like, God damn it. I feel like I just got dragged by this book. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. If you get out of the way. I have to say like 90% of spiritual work is getting out of the way, especially mm. specifically spell work. It's like, mm. okay, you came, you did this elaborate ritual. You did everything you're supposed to do. Now go away. No stop. <laughs> so there was a, a teacher back in early in like my witchy development. And she said, here's how you cast the spell. You cast it and you forget about it. She's like, forgetting about it is the magic. 
I'm like, why? I'm like, but I'm like, but we have, you know, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. And I was like, yeah, but if we're doing like a seven day candle spell or even I go for 21 days for some clients sometimes, is that me stepping? Is that me walking away? And she goes, she's like, yes and no. What I mean by forgetting about it is that it, once you are finished, if you manage to just leave it alone, you release it. She's like, so forget about it. I posted some testimonials today and like yeah. three of them, I believe, were three people saying, I forgot that you did this. <laughs> I was busy making money or I was so happy mm. I forgot to even like to write this. They forgot about yeah. it and they're like, and it happened so fast. And I'm like, that's why mm. it happened so fast for you because you forgot about it. You let it go. Things started to come in and you were paying attention to what was happening you were present mm-hmm. with what you were asking mm-hmm. for and boom, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it happened. That's so hard though. It's just like when, when you're dating and people are like, when you stop looking, when you, you know, like when you stop searching, they just come through or yeah. When, when you like stop worrying about it, that's when money starts to like make sense to you. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like so annoyingly true. I mean, I was like ready to quit dating when I met my partner and him saying we like we're we're both like deuces. We're going to be single forever. And it was so easy. It was like next day he walked in the door and I really had to just like get over myself, you know, and like truly forget about it for that to happen. But it's so much easier said than done. It's a process. It's not something that you're going to turn off and on. Yeah, that should be that should really be emphasized. And I do talk about that, about the process of everything of like, this is not going to happen overnight, but I'm just letting you know that this is a concept that you should really like meditate on. Just meditate on that concept because same thing. When I met John, both of us were single for five years. Wow. Exactly five years. Just because we were traveling and like doing other stuff. Living. And, yeah. and yeah, I want, I, I, well, at that point, I wasn't really interested in a relationship at all. I was focused on building up my brand. Yeah. That's what I was focused on. Same. I was like, I was like tits deep in building my business and I like could barely be bothered to shower, let alone like go out and date. <laughs> yeah. And even when it would come about, if, if something was like even slightly off, I was like, no, I'm not, no, I don't, I didn't need you. I'm building a brand. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a businessman. I don't have time for this. And then I, I went to like, I went to a show and literally walked across the street and saw John. And I was with my friend who was a mutual friend and Whoa. we've been together for six years. So it's like it, stuff like that does happen, but I was absolutely not looking and neither was he. And he like, he, it was, it just happened because it happened. Mm-hmm. But I had, I knew exactly that whole process of me saying no to yeah. things I wasn't willing to put up with. Me having, you know, a focus on my business. He's very focused on his career. Yeah. Those energies were being built. So mm-hmm. I think the importance of not obsessing over it is because we tend to obsess with thoughts that aren't productive. Yeah. And they're not going to help us. Okay, and that is the first half of this episode with Michael Cardenas of Old Ways. Stay tuned for the next the next part of our interview where we dive really deeply into ideas like essentialism and where Michael learned everything that he learned, how he became the practicing witch that he is today and brujo that he is today. We talk about lineage, ancestry, all this other good stuff, lots of good stories, so stay tuned for that episode. Bye.